That said, the first series we actually have to talk about, uh, Momoji no Kisesu, definitely benefits from uh, having its name in Japanese, because I, I feel like it it fits more neatly with what it is being about shogi. Hmm. No, I, 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 I agree, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like culturally there's a reason. Also, it reminds me kind of like you kept Hikaru no Go the way it is, even though you could translate that as Hikaru's Go, so it's fine. There's a precedent. I think it, it makes sense for the right sort of series, and more often than not, when the series name is already quite short and punchy, like, that's the way to go. Like, because cause you can understand that Shok- uh, Shokugeki no Soma became Food Wars here because that rolls off the tongue easier. But then, like, say, like, say Kimetsu no Yaiba, uh, they, they could have left it as that. Demon Slayer's fine, it's great, but they didn't really need to fiddle with that. Yeah. I mean, if they were to translate the title, uh, they could call it, like, Momiji Season, but then you'd miss the pun that his name means, like, maple tree. So, keeping it in Japanese also preserves, like, the double meaning that wouldn't really be there in the in an English translation. Yeah, it's like, again, that's a case where I think there was a lot more thought put into the decision not to change it. But should we actually talk about the series itself? Yeah, we probably should. <laughs> sure. So, Momiji no Kitsetsu is about a middle schooler, I think? Or is he, like, a in the first year of high school? His name is Momiji Kuramichi, and his elder brother was once a very talented uh, shogi player, referred to as the Dragon King. And he was, you know, incredibly skilled. People say, like, he was as beautiful as his name. Meanwhile, Momiji is not very successful in shogi. He just does not have the same talent as him. Like, he's never passed the entrance tests and he hasn't made it very far in tournaments and stuff. Even though he practices so hard, he's never made, like, the top 16 and tournament and whatever so but one day the f- first ever woman shogi player S- the silver princess ichio ichihara is suddenly at his house taking a bat and he surprises him of course and ichio turns out to be the an apprentice of sakura and ichio decides to train momiji in order to become a better shogi player and train him to become good enough to become the next Dragon King. That's basically the story, and during the course of the first chapter, Icho manages to identify that the reason why Momiji's not having much success as a player is because he's trying to imitate his brother's style of playing, which is very aggressive, and is coined the Sakura style. But she tells Momiji that, you know, he needs to play a style that is more suited to his strengths. And he realizes because he used to play so often with his brother, he naturally developed his own style in counter to his brother's style, which was more defensive. And so his best style of attack is actually playing defense. And later he has a match against someone else in the dra- in like the 80th National Dragon Tournament Junior Division. And he manages to use that style that he used to play against with his brother and win a match against someone he was not able to beat before. And that basically sets up the series from there as he is about to like embark on the path to become a professional shogi player and eventually become the Dragon King. So I guess uh, I guess what do we just what do we think about this in general then? Well, I was looking forward to it because I think that we haven't really had like a good games based manga in a while. At least nothing that's like stuck around. Uh, the last attempt at a shogi series that we had seen was oof, what was the name? Uh, Mononofu. Yes, Mononofu. And I really enjoyed Mononofu, and I was very sad that it didn't catch on. 
So I was hoping that Momiji no Kisetsu would be a series that would, you know, maybe have more success. Or, like, I was just hoping for another interesting read in general, regardless of, like, how long this lasts. And, like, in the first couple of pages, I wasn't as... I wasn't sold on it immediately. But by the time I got to the end of the first chapter and I saw where it was going, I thought, okay, this is has a, is really compelling and it has a really interesting angle. And I'm also very interested in the mentor-student relationship between Icho and Mumiji. And the fact that, like, she is raising him to become, like, her rival, basically. To have a match against. Because Sakura was not able to fulfill his dream. So she is fulfilling, like, his dreams through Mumiji. So I think that's, like, a very interesting angle, too. That I, like, really want to see where that goes. Yeah, I I, I kind of felt the same way. Like, I wasn't really super into it at first. Um, but I mean, it doesn't help that, like, I pretty much know nothing about Shogi. So I, I get kind of lost when, you know, they start explaining about, you know, things as far as, like, ranks and tournaments and, like, rules go. And unfortunately, all that, all that stuff is kind of lost on me. But uh, what I find interesting is I find the idea of Momiji's character arc interesting and in where, like... You know, at some point he'll, you know, I mean, he he'll start kind of taking those steps towards, you know, basically stepping out of the legacy and the shadow that his brother left behind, uh, which which I think could be a really interesting character arc for him. Mm-hmm. And I think that they have really good dramatic moments to like sell that dramatic arc, like when he's kind of losing in that rematch he has with this guy he's like he can't see the board like he's there's like a visual of like just these a bunch of these leaves covering the shogi board but then he remembers Itcha's words that you know he only looks at the board but he should try looking up at his opponent so i thought like that was like a really good moment to be like you know don't be down on yourself like look up and face your opponent head on and like enjoy the game and i like that and then there was like a great visual like as he's you know enjoying the game and he's playing better and better like the leaves are flying off the board and stuff and then the, it, the board becomes all clear and yeah I, there were some really good visuals that sell the character arc very well i i really like the um i really like that moment as well but i also really like how it kind of led into this this t- this double page spread where like basically like everything just kind of stops and like everybody's just kind of like taking the moment in um i thought that sequence was pretty well done actually mhm i i liked it a lot as well it i don't feel like it's it, it's not the highest praise but i think it's fair to say it's the first new series of the year that I actually really felt any sort of a long-term attachment to. Really? And more of a shame that you only get three chapters of it. But yeah, every, everything before has been kind of... They, very little of it's been bad. I'm largely very positive about comics full stop. But a lot of it was kind of uh, milk toast, like a better phrasing. Like Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, as much as it's quite fun from those first three chapters I read, was... Not the most inspired series, uh, and I say that as a fan of Black Clover, so keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, but but this, it, it's kind of interesting to go and find it both really original, whilst also being very aware that the first couple of chapters were literally the same as what came out in the Jump uh, Giga run, which has been collected in a volume as well. Uh, I don't know how Japanese audiences responded to that, but I find that uh, both a sensible decision, because don't fix what ain't broke but also a, a very unusual decision because if people had forked out for that volume they're going to feel a little bit shafted uh coming to the new series and a, a few people i spoke to who picked up the japanese volume but uh but read in english were like kind of down about that that said uh it's it's so incredibly strong with what it's doing uh the feeling especially around the sort of the autumn leaf aesthetic and how that plays out with a uh, even to the level of the colour of Mamiji's hair, is fantastic. And it, it really... It, oh, it just... It just... Tickle that it's just right. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So it was published in Jump Giga, a, like, a volume's worth of chapters, last year, starting in, like, May? Yeah, it got the... It got a summer... It was in the three summer issues last year, which weren't ones that I picked up. But it, it, it caused a bit of a stir. Uh, both... 
in fact, that's that's the interesting thing. We'll say this now. Uh, both these series are reboots of Jump Giga series. Mamiji no Kisetsu had been collected as a volume before it got serialized, but Invade You as well had had a, a several chapter run in the winter issues of Jump Giga, uh, to the point of having like three chapters an issue for the three issues. So like they they've both had that chance to really get their audience first. It it feels like Weekly Shonen Jump is trying something very new with how they get new series going, just to try and have ones that stick. And it, I mean, it remains to be seen whether it works, but at the least, it's led to some good comics being published in the magazine. It's an interesting connection b- between these two series is that they had these pilot runs elsewhere. And it was like an extended pilot run of a couple chapters and not just, you know, one pilot chapter. So it's very interesting, like, they're taking a more long-form development uh, approach to some of their new series now. Which I, I think they're aware they need to do that as well, because, I mean, uh, pe- people are exaggerating slightly by saying that, like, Jumps failed to find real hits in recent history. But it's more that I think they just have to change their approach to finding uh, defining popular series and redefining what popular means, because it used to mean sells over 100,000 first volume. Now it means they can build up to that over time. And I, I think the Giga pilot runs for these two series kind of represent them realising that. Yeah, and it's very interesting to see like what could come out of that. I mean, I also have noticed that they sometimes are moving stuff that aren't performing so well in the magazine over to Jump Plus for a little bit? Or, like, they they are giving series more of a chance these days to, like, find its audience. So I think that's, like, very fair and also much healthier, like, for in order to, like, you know, cultivate audiences and, like, help give the series as much of a chance as possible to, you know, reach a potential audience. Absolutely. I mean, they're doing that with Jump Square as well. Uh, Black Torch, uh, which is coming out from Viz soon, which surprised me. I, I haven't really been paying attention to Jump Square licenses. Uh, has, has made the jump from there to Plus uh, just before Tomato Poi, uh, No Lycan Fiend. I've already forgotten what that series is called. <laughs> uh, Lycan Fiend, we'll go with that. Uh, like the, the two of them moving over, I think, has both been assigned like from multiple magazines that they're willing to give something a chance to be a cult hit, which is, I mean, that's Shonen Jump Plus's entire deal. Unless you're World's End harem, like, you're not going to be a huge hit if you're in Plus. You're going to do all right. And that's fine. And kind of healthy to encourage that rather than uh, just burning to the ground everything that isn't a smash. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, t- I took that a little bit far away from the actual content of the two series. Is there anything else you guys want to say about Mamiji no Kisetsu? I think uh, the Jumpstart run ended off on a very interesting note that, you know, it's pretty good for, like, a first street pilot chapter, here's a preview of what you can expect from the series kind of thing, because it ends off with introducing a new rival in the form of Somi, who also has this connection to Icho. He, like, he was also a student of Sakura's. He wants to mentor under Icho. So it's, like, a cool, like, okay, here's Momiji's, like, direct rival, someone who has, like, supposedly more qualifications than him or at least more experience but like they just but he but you know it's someone momiji needs to compete against in order to like prove like he's you know uh in order to like who's the better one to fulfill sakura's dream basically so i think that was a good note to leave off of it was like okay cool this is a cool cliffhanger and i wonder where the series will go now with this relationship uh, and it's a, I don't know if we'll get more, but you know, it's a good, I like it when the dress around leaves off, like with this promise of, okay, this is only to get bigger from here. And it makes me want to like see where the stories is going uh, in the future. So I like being left off on a note like that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking about whether I would read this weekly or not. And honestly, cause you know, I talk about, I've talked about, you know, dozens of times how I'm very picky about, you know, what new series I I read weekly and jump because you never know when it's just going to burn out or whatever, uh, like Maxie was saying. Um, 
So I don't know. It's interesting, like, is because like this is the kind of series I I really did not see myself having an interest in, but 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 the promise of you know such a you know interesting arc for uh, for Momiji actually makes me want to read more of it. And I would actually consider maybe reading this weekly at least for a little while. Like, I actually want to see where this goes. So I was pleasantly surprised on that front. Okay, then. 